team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now, I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. Yeah. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. Yeah. Right? That's the team, gentlemen. Yeah. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. It is April 24th, 2011, Easter Sunday. Uh, Happy Easter to anybody that's listening that is uh, of the Christian denomination. Uh, If not, uh, happy whatever you consider today's day to be. Happy whatever pagan holiday it was. Um, Anyway, uh, today's show, I'm going to dive right into a few things. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is just something that's been on my mind since I saw it uh, early, early this morning. Uh, I was up till about 7 o'clock this morning, actually, and then I I napped before I I did uh, JJ's show and my show. But uh, I was watching a a friend of mine who's a fellow filmmaker, and uh, he's an investigative reporter and all-around awesome individual. His name's Dan Dix, and uh, he created – Press for Truth, which is uh, out of Canada, and these guys are awesome. They go around, uh, and they their the camera is their is their weapon. They they capture what's really going on. And during the G20, uh, his crew and him really stepped up to the plate and put their uh, collective butts on the line to show people the truth of what was going on at the G20 in Canada in Toronto uh, about a year ago, and uh, it was just incredible. I, I, he got footage from other people, other patriots, and you know, uh, freedom lovers that went and videoed what was going on and got arrested and the crap kicked out of him for nothing. And uh, he, uh, he, put him and Brian Law, another guy uh, from Press for Truth, put together a movie they this is their second movie the first one they did was uh, called united we fall it was about the uh, north american union which you can find on their website or um 
You can watch both of them for free on YouTube, on their YouTube page, which is Weaving Spider, which is all one word. But I suggest that you guys go help out the filmmakers and just purchase the DVD. It's not expensive. You know, it helps them make future movies. But uh, their uh, their newest one, Into the Fire, which is about the G20, is just incredible. And it it uh, if you don't know what a police state looks like, you will see what a police state looks like. You will see see how fast police and military are willing to violate your civil liberties and take away your freedoms. That by law they're not allowed to do. You know, when people say, "Oh, but they're they're the authority," it doesn't matter. The Constitution is what is the law of the land. So it doesn't matter if. You know, Bob, the the street sweeper, or the president of the United States violates it. It's still a violation of the Constitution. There's no difference just because of the person's, you know, level or their job or whatever. You know, the street sweeper shouldn't be <clears throat> sent to jail for life for violating someone's constitutional rights, and whereas the president gets away with it every day, you, that's wrong. You know, and cops, you know, government agents, at all none of these people have the authority to violate your constitutional rights. They think they do, so they'll grab you and physically assault you. And then later on, they'll, they'll oh well, you know, you're going to do the ride, but you, you you might not do the you might not do the, the way the cops say it is you might not do the time, but you're definitely going to do the take the ride. So they're going to arrest you. You might not go to jail and spend time, and you know, you might not be in jail forever, but you're going to do the ride. So. It's just ridiculous, dude. It, it's completely ridiculous. You know, peace police officers used to be called peace officers back in the day. And I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to want to be a cop. And then when I got older, I realized I couldn't be a cop because by the time I was old enough to be a cop, by that time, a lot of the decent cops were getting retired or, or leaving and they were replacing them with the scumbags that they have now. So it, it's it's – it's just very telling that what's happening to our society that over the course of, you know, in, well, I'll say in the past like 35, 40 years, the police departments have really begun to be, mili you know, turn into military. And within the past 10 years, it's gotten worse. And that's why I covered the North Hollywood shootout a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's why I covered the North Hollywood shootout because, uh, there's just so much information. There's so much information to be gleaned from that little, that that little that little incident alone. I mean, right after that, Clinton pushed for the assault weapons ban. You know, so just because two bad seeds, everybody, no, no one has the right to have you know guns and anything else. It's ridiculous. So for for people to to say something stupid like that and for for people to for the citizens to accept those kind of draconian laws as oh well for my safety it's never for your safety because do you feel any safer now that the cops are like the military? In the past 10 years the incidents of police brutality have risen through the roof. And yet we're not any safer. I don't feel any safer. In fact, I, I, feel, I feel safer dealing with the, the, the citizens than I do dealing with police. I don't think police and government agents really care about the citizens because I know that they've been trained to look at the citizens like terrorists. So it, to me, I don't feel safe. <clears throat> not that I'm a terrorist. I just don't feel safe because I feel that the police are out of control and that they think that they're above the law. And as do many other agencies. And I'm not saying every cop. There are some good ones. But unfortunately, the bad ones are outweighing the good ones now. So I'm, I, I'm, calling, up, I'm calling on all the good cops that are out there to step up to the plate and start to – you know, you, even if it's your commander, if it's someone higher up, I don't care. Put them in, in, in place and remind them of their oath that they took. They didn't take an oath to, to – protect the new world order or to protect some corporatocracy and some evil you know entities whatever they may be okay they took an oath to defend the constitution and the citizens so make them remind them of their oath you know introduce them to the oath keepers remind them what they're supposed to do <clears throat> cops anybody that's listening again go look up rome's purge Look what Hitler did to the brown shirts. You know, they, they the brown shirts helped him round people up, and they they helped. You know, I mean, and it wasn't just the Jews; it was you know political dissidents, everybody. Okay, they rounded up all these people, and when they were done, 
Hitler got rid of the brown shirts because they posed a threat to the army, and the army said, "We're not going to fight, you know, wars of aggression for you unless you get rid of the brown shirts." So, you think that our military wouldn't do the same thing? You think that maybe we wouldn't have generals that say, hey, "Look, we'll fight wars for you, for you, you know, new world order," but you got to get rid of this civilian little police group you got. You know, history repeats itself over and over and over again. All right, guys, we're going to break. We're right back. I'm your host, Popeye. This is Down the Rabbit Hole on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Welcome back. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. It's uh, Sunday, April 24th, and uh, I just want to get, again, right back into what I was talking about. So the cops really don't – they're out of control, and we need to we need to educate them because they're – in the end, they're going to be the deciding factor of whether or not we can win this or not. Because if we get soldiers and cops, you know, military, everybody on our side, and they see what's really going on, and they stand up for what's right and what's the right thing to do, then the New World Order can't pull off half the crap that they want to pull off to begin with. So we need to educate the police. We need to let them know what's going on. We need to tell them, hey, you know, this is what's up. Uh, if you know, if they think you're nuts, because some of them will, some of them are going to look at you like you're crazy. Remember, a lot of these newer cops, they don't hire cops with an IQ over 100 anymore because they don't want them to do any critical thinking on their own. You know, uh, and a lot of these cops are, are brainwashed. They they give them education. Hey, citizens are terrorists. You know, citizens don't like the fact that we invaded, uh, you know, Iraq. So they got to be terrorists because they're not going along with what. You know, our president says it's the right thing to do, and you know, since the, the supreme leader says we we must do whatever the supreme leader says we must do, it, it's brainwashing. So, you know, police, military. I suggest you guys go look up Rome's purge and look what happened to the brown shirts. Hitler turned on them just as fast as these New World Order tools will turn on you. And if you think that these people are any different than Hitler, you're wrong. They're funded by the same people. Many of them are the same blood relations. Adolf Hitler was actually a blood relative of the Rothschild family. I suggest you go look it up. His father wasn't his biological father. Okay, His, bio, his mother was impregnated by somebody in the Rothschild household because she was a chambermaid. And even though he was... You know, like uh, you know, half-blooded, or you know, because he wasn't from two Rothschilds, they still that blood lineage. They use that. They use that to their advantage. Look at Bill Clinton. His last, his real last name should be Rockefeller. Um, it, it, you'd be surprised who these people really are related to. Blood, you know, blood lineage. And when you look, it's not a coincidence. It's not a. It is. It's not a coincidence that. This middle class, you know, everyday girl that happens to be marrying uh, Prince William just so happens to be blood related to people like George W. Bush. But she's from no aristocratic background at all, right? Okay. So she's related to George Bush. She's related to all these other people that George Bush is in blood relation to. And just go look this stuff up. I mean, it, it's out there. The truth is out there. People just would rather not believe it. People would rather believe that everything's hunky dory because things are just too damn scary when they find the truth out. But that's that's too bad. That's the way that the reality is. The truth is what it is. You know, information is neither good nor evil. It's what you do with that information that makes it good or evil. Uh, the truth is just truth, and information is just information. You know, I I can't help it that, uh, you know, we we have a police state. I I can't be blamed for that. I've tried to warn people I, for years. I've been warning people. Uh, at one point, I I could be blamed for taking part in the police state, but I, again, it's been years since I woke up and I actively do things to try to wake people up 
and you know make up for my my past uh you know not 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 being as awake as I should have been at least as I feel as I should have been earlier you know and I woke up back in like 2006 and to me there's people that woke up way earlier than that but there seemed to be around 2006 there seemed to be a huge mass awakening and since then it's just exponentially growing and growing and growing and there are good cops out there there are people in the military that are good that are out there we need you guys to help us educate your fellow police your fellow military men because it, it, without you guys we're going to lose the fight if you guys turn against the citizens that's it you know and that's what these guys want they've already got the fema camps they want their they the, the new world order wants a bloody revolution they want citizens out in the street shooting it out with cops they know the people are armed so rather than try to prevent one they'd rather push for one and make it inevitable you know jefferson i think it was jefferson that said peace uh, men who make peaceful revolution impossible make uh, bloody revolution inevitable or something like it, uh, something quote, close to that I might be paraphrasing I might have actually got it right I'm not looking it up right now but that's basically what he said and so if if you know if they don't allow people to uh, if they don't allow you to uh, you know go out and protest if they don't allow you to say hey uh, I'm I'm pissed off and address your grievances with your government, which you're supposed to be allowed to do. Then guess what happens? Eventually, a bloody revolution is going to happen because people are only going to put, especially the Americans, and they know this. They know that um, a lot of Americans, some Americans will just keep putting up with it, but a lot of Americans still have that spirit of resistance in them, and they know that people are just waiting. And all it's going to take is a spark, and things are going to go haywire. And I'm not. That's not good. Because that's what they want, and then they'll start rounding people up and putting them in prison camps, and then people will be getting shot and on both sides, and it's not good. That's not going to win anything. That's just going to further give them, you know, their reasoning for coming, clamping down on people and taking away your civil liberties, and then telling people, "Oh, this is the reason I'm doing it." So it's pathetic, and um, people need to wake up. Introduce the local cops to. Uh, Oath Keepers. Introduce your military that you might know to Oath Keepers. Please, before it's too late, go, go. If you don't know what Oath Keepers is, go look up the Oath Keepers. They are not a, a rogue organization. They are by far not a rogue organization. They are active duty police, military, firefighters, and retired uh, military police and firefighters and you know veterans. And it's These guys are just trying to say, hey, look, we're not going to break the constitution and disarm people for no reason at all um the founder Stuart rhodes is a constitutional genius you should go look him up he's not some fly-by-night schmuck so i suggest everybody you know go look him up check him out see who he is check into oath keepers educate your friends educate your family educate any cops police you know Anybody you know, educate them because the, we need them on our side. We don't need to be enemies with them. The New World Order wants us to fight with the police. They want us to argue with each other. They want us to hate one another. Don't don't fall prey to that crap. That's all a setup. Don't fall prey to that at all. Okay. I know it's hard. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're getting, you know, I've seen the past couple of days. I've seen videos of the police state really ramping up. There's a one on YouTube where a guy gets arrested uh, in his in his garage for videotaping from his garage in his own property someone being pulled over in the street that has nothing to do with him and the cop just walked up on his property and said i'm going to take your cell phone and then reached for it and grabbed it and said well i'm going to arrest you because you won't give me your cell phone i mean that's that for withholding evidence that's ridiculous that's unconstitutional the cop should lose his job i would love to interview the cop on my radio show and tell him you're a scumbag in a disgrace to your uniform and you should lose your badge what gives you the right to think you can just walk up on someone's property? I'm a police officer. It doesn't matter. It, 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 he's trespassing. Unless he was called to that residence and, and he thinks that someone's in danger on that residence, he's got no right to just walk up on that person's property. And he literally walked into the guy's garage and grabbed his phone. His friend, He was able to hand it off to his friend who then took off out of the garage with it. That's ridiculous. You know? 
And uh, oh, it was John F. Kennedy who said it. All right, th thank you uh, an uh, to Anonymous nine ninety three forty in uh, my chat room. He's the one who uh, just posted the uh, the actual quote from Kennedy about revolution. Uh, we're going to break, guys. Go check out the chat room. You can go to uh, federaljack.com and just click on the chat room link, or go to uh, dtrhfj.chatandgo.com. We'll be right back. We're going to pay the bills. This Mary Magdalene giving birth to the children of Jesus, the evolution of the world, bloody and dramatic. Human beings killing monkeys to conquer the planet, the kingdoms of Africa and Mesopotamia. Machine gunning your body with depleted uranium. Well, welcome back. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye from federaljack.com. Uh, I just but quickly before I forget, I wanted to let you guys know uh, you can listen on your cell phone or a regular house phone to the show uh, via Upsnap. You can you call 704-772-7627 and enter the code 10016, and you can listen to the show on your phone uh, wherever you are if you want to listen to it mobile, if you've got to run around, or uh, you can go to the website, and we have uh, a couple uh, smartphone apps and stuff that you can listen to the radio show as well. So, uh, anyway, getting back into the police state, um, moving on from what I was talking about, uh, as I said, check out Into the Fire, just go on uh, YouTube and type in Into the Fire full film and it should bring up uh, Dan Dix's YouTube page and you should see the link. Check it out. Please support these guys. There's links in um, inside the uh, – description to uh, go to his page and, and purchase the DVD please help these guys out He's, you know Dan's an average everyday Canadian citizen that just decided to stand up for people's you know rights and say that and say this is wrong and he needs your support so please support the filmmakers go out and purchase even just purchase one copy of the DVD usually these guys don't put copyright protection on it so that you can copy it and pass it out to other people so you know support them by at least purchasing a copy and helping them out but you can view the film on his YouTube page weaving spider and um, I promise you you will not watch that film without your blood pressure is going to go up. Your anxiety levels are going to shoot through the roof. Dan did the world's best job I've seen in a long time of showing people exactly what a police state looks like and getting you to feel that you're literally there on the ground with these poor people that are getting pepper sprayed and beaten and tasered and kicked and hit for no reason. Just like at our G20 here in Pittsburgh, you know. Months before, they did the same thing to our people. But Dan was able to literally get on the ground, and because of all the video footage from all the people, uh, the Canadian citizens who had the courage to stand up to this police state action, uh, you know, they did the right thing. And I commend all of you. There's so many of you. I, I, it's Dan listed them all in the credits of the film. But you guys, every one of you, hats off to you. I salute you. I respect you guys immensely. The work you did was incredible. You put your butts on the line. Some of you actually got beaten and have physical scars uh, from your ordeal. And uh, I appreciate everybody coming out and telling their stories. Uh, the, the stuff that you'll see, you'll notice that the citizens got together and banded together, and there were people waiting outside the detention area so that when people came out, they had food and water for them, free legal advice, uh, free rides to wherever they had to go. That's how people got together. And the Canadian citizens themselves showed the world by their actions. The citizens of Canada that got together and did that stuff, you showed the world how people should, should act in any type of situation like that. The cops and the RCMP and the rest of you guys, you're all disgraceful and you should all be fired, including Officer Bubbles. And if you guys don't know who Officer Bubbles is, just go on YouTube and look up Officer Bubbles. He's a scumbag cop from Toronto that arrested a woman because she was blowing bubbles. Yes, blowing bubbles. Okay, go look it up. Just go on YouTube or Google Officer Bubbles. I'm sure it'll come up. Uh... <clears throat> The uh, just so the there's a couple people in the chat room that are asking uh, what video I'm talking about. The video I was talking about was from earlier. It's a movie called Into the Fire. 
check it out. It's uh, a movie by Dan Dix and Press for Truth. Uh, you can see it on YouTube. Just type in Into the Fire full length. And uh, they got to – you'll see they were able to show – exactly what a police state looks like and i promise you you guys won't be able to watch this movie without being feeling you know a, a certain level of anxiety and you're going to feel trepidation you're going to feel like oh my god like it's almost uncomfortable to watch but you have to watch it because it's reality it's what's happening and if you don't pay attention to it and you don't show other people what's going on it's going to happen whether or not <clears throat> It, it, we might we have a chance at stopping it, I should say, if we stand up and fight. If you don't stand up and fight, it's going to happen. So to not face it and to go la 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 it doesn't exist. I don't see it. La 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 la. That's just going to that enables the problem. That enables the police state. That enables people having their civil liberties violated. And just because it hasn't happened to you yet, don't think it won't. I mean, you'll in the movie you see a guy he gets his prosthetic leg torn off. And they, they, they're like, get up. And he's like, I can't walk without my leg. And they were like, fine. And his arm is kind of damaged, so he can't move his shoulder fully behind his – you know, uh, like he can't put his arm fully behind his back like you, maybe other people can. He's got a shoulder problem. And they said, move your arm. He said, I can't. It doesn't move that way. They didn't care. They just picked him up and dragged him backwards on his elbows. He was bleeding. And you know what his crime was? His crime was going out to lunch with his family and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's what his crime was. Now, that's a police state. And this guy worked for the government. He worked for the government. He no longer can work. He had to – he has, he's on disability, full disability, and he had, to, he had to retire. He had to medically retire from his government job because of the ordeal of being locked in a cage and everything else because this guy's an older gentleman. And that's how it affected him. So that's nice. You pick on crippled people and you, you take away their prosthetic leg, and they told him he couldn't have his prosthetic leg in jail because it could be used as a weapon. So for their own safety and for his safety, they took his prosthetic leg. Gee, what big men. I want any, any, any Canadian comps that may hear this broadcast, you're all cowards. Anybody that was involved in that, you're cowards. If you're a good comp, because Dan Dix was able to catch a couple good couple good pops and you see these they, some of them were very friendly and to the ones that were respectful and friendly kudos to you for you know doing your job and being professional but for all the other ones that were running around grabbing people out of crowds and beating the crap out of people you're all scumbags i i hope you can all look in, i hope when you look in the mirror each morning you guys are disgusted with your puke self anybody that serves a master like that and willingly attacks innocent civilians that are unarmed for nothing, and you'll see. Just go watch the movie Into the Fire. It, the, it, the G20 in Canada was very, very telling of how they how they feel and how they treat people. And you can see that it's not an American thing or not a European thing because the, UK, the G20 in the UK was the same way. The G20 in America was the same way. Look how they treat the citizens of every country. These are these big corporate oligarchs that say, hey, we own your country, not you. Screw you. We're in charge, not you. We're going to run your country. I mean the cops were literally telling people that um, – they, they were literally telling people this isn't Canada anymore and there is no uh, – you know, there there is no <clears throat> there's no Canada here anymore. Uh, there's no civil rights. This is martial law. That's that's pretty that's pretty rough. So, uh, <clears throat> all right, guys, I'm gonna open up the phones. So anybody who wants to call in, the phone lines are now open. I unlocked the phone lines. So if you guys want to call in, uh, we're gonna be going to break in a few minutes. So. Anybody that does call in, you'll probably get carried over into the uh, the last segment of the first hour. And I also wanted to give you guys uh, a heads up. Next week, make sure you tune in, especially from 6 to 7, because I have a special guest coming on. Uh, I plan on having more guests coming on in the future. And one of our my special guests that's going to be coming on is none other than Gary Franchi, the guy responsible for RTR.org. Um <clears throat> He helped out uh, launch Republic Magazine. He uh, he's produced three films: uh, Don't Tread on Me, Camp FEMA, and Camp FEMA Two. Um, it, it's it's incredible. 
I suggest you guys pay attention. He's going to be on for a full hour next week promoting his stuff. So, all right, guys, we have a, a caller. I think it's Brian calling on. Let me see. Hello? Hello? Uh, hey. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Uh, going good. How's, uh, how's, uh, I, I heard that, uh, Wright Haven was, uh, forced to drop their, their case against you and your, your website is now back up and running. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they dismissed it with prejudice, which that means that they out. cannot ever go after me in that instance again. Awesome. All right, we're going to break. Brian, hang out, because I want to, uh, I want you to be able to tell people, uh, you know, uh, the latest news about you and what's going on with your site when we come back from break. So, everybody hang out. We're back in a few minutes. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. And I say both as I continue to blame the Knights Templar and the Hospitallers. The real reason New York lost their towers. Don't sit back or hesitate to react to the impact. Many taking a nap. In fact, they would fake an attack to make way... Welcome back. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. Um, I'm joined by Brian from uswgo.com. And Brian, before we went to break, you, know, you were talking about uh, your case with Wright Haven that you know, they were going after you. And for anybody that's a new listener, Brian was getting uh, attacked by Wright Haven over a simple photo that he had um, you know, just linked and posted in his um, – uh, on his blog, and uh, they went after him because he was exposing the TSA groping and everything else. And they they tried they always try to make examples of people. And then once they found out Brian was disabled, they even went after him more hardcore, which pissed me off even further. Uh, and that's why Brian was already he had uh, he had always uh, submitted articles from uh, USWGO to me, but I gave him access as a uh, reporter for Federal Jack. So now he, he, you know, he does he he does his now he's got his site back and he's able to use his site again. But he still submits articles for and stories for us at Federal Jack. So, Brian, <clears throat> now that I've got any new listeners caught up to date, uh, go ahead and uh, you know update everybody uh, on as to what's going on with the lawsuit and you know the finality of it and anything that's been going on with your website and any new investigations that you might have going on over there. All right, thanks. Now, uh, what's what's been going on with the case is that Wright Haven is uh, practically scared because I because I submitted a, a you know like an affidavit which is like you know like witness testimony. So they've realized that there was no way in heck they were going to win the case. So what they did was they first dismissed it without prejudice, which means they could come after me. Then, at some point, after the judge sort of slammed them, they decided to uh, dismiss the case with prejudice. But uh, the, my attorney was saying that there, he still wants to go after them because he wants to at least punish them for what they did to me and everything. So he wants to make them pay the attorney fees, and then the case will be completely over. Good. They should be punished for what they did. They should be flogged publicly. They should have a bigger bigger punishment than just paying your attorney's fees. But, yeah, they should be punished in some way or another. I mean, going after you for doing nothing wrong, okay, fair use, it's a law, and for going after you and trying to intimidate you and then threatening you because once they found out you were disabled, that's just despicable and that's – they should be uh, – I mean, honestly, I think we should, be, we should bring public hanging back. If you want crime, you want crime to stop? Do public executions of people that are – and don't just execute people that are like some patsy. You know, Bring one of these bankers down. Bring like the head of Goldman Sachs or one of these other scumbags down and hang them publicly right on Wall Street and then leave him hanging there from a yard arm so other, with, with, with the word traitor hung around his neck on a, like a big wooden board just like they used to do with the pirates. You know, Do the same thing. I guarantee you people will be like, wow, you know. The natives are getting restless. They should be held accountable for what they did to you. You know, Wright Haven should, at the very least, have to pay your your legal fees. If not, 
more. And interestingly enough, I saw an article yesterday. I don't remember where it is, but um, I, I, I have it saved in one of my browsers. I have to find it. I have like 35 tabs open in, in Google Chrome alone. But um, Right Haven, a judge just threw out uh, a whole bunch of suits against Right Haven for going after people just like you for doing the same crap. So, you know, luckily we do have st- we still have some good judges in this country. Apparently, I'm glad that uh, they ruled in your favor, Brian. You have the site yeah. back up and everything. It's back up and running now. Yep, it is. And uh, I saw you were getting as soon as you had your site back up. Some you were getting attacked by hackers. So uh, again, you must be you must be go you must be right over target because that's when you receive the most flack. Yeah, I've definitely brought out a lot of uh, a lot of questions, a lot of facts, and a lot of truths. Like one of the things I was bringing out was about how uh, Harp has a certain data has been erased. Like if you look at April seven through uh, I think it's the twelfth, those days are gone on a certain magnetometer site. So why would certain magnetometer data be unavailable from certain days? Yeah, and I, there's a couple people on YouTube that have uh, and that have written articles that have shown that a lot of times those days they correspond with like massive tornadoes and stuff that were taking place, and they they show that they're you know what they call harp rings appearing over an area, and then within 48 hours there's massive tornadoes. And this one guy, Dutch, I think it's called Dutch Sense. Um, some people are like, oh, they badmouth him and say he's a uh, a, uh, a a wacko and this and that and that uh, he's crazy. But I've uh, mirrored two of his videos that I I checked them out myself and I found out that his information was 100 percent accurate. So to me, you know, if people can make fun of and say, oh, they're not using harp here or harp there, but why wouldn't they use harp? The the harp as we know it is older technology. They have more improved scalar technology now. Harp is an older version, so why wouldn't they use it to manipulate the weather around the United States? Obviously, they 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 somehow keep Bohemian Grove from burning to the ground every year during wildfire season. Uh, there's not that many, uh, you know. I, I there's not enough wildfire, fu- you know, fire, um, wildfire firefight firefighters. That's a, a mouthful right there. Uh, to protect the entire thing and still fight the fires elsewhere. So they have to be using some sort of weather manipulation to be able to keep the forest around there uh, not you know not all they would have to do is keep it humid and you know keep uh, keep it moist and the fire would naturally not be able to burn it down because it would be, it would have to it would burn around it. I mean this is stuff that sounds crazy but th- when you look into it like Bohemian Grove's been been up since you know at least the 50s. I don't remember how far back it goes. I think it actually goes back to the 30s. But um, in fact, it does because it went back. It's older than uh, World War II, so I take that back. I think it goes back to like the 1930s, and and, and it might even be older. But um, the the stuff that goes on there, you, you know, you, all these wildfires that happen year after year after year, it would be cheaper for them to you know just keep a, a damp. Uh, you know, rain cloud and and rain clouds over the area during wildfire season. All these other cities in California burned down, but that thing's never burned down. I just find that suspect. And people can laugh and say, "Oh, you're a tinfoil hat wearer," but I suggest you go look up geoengineering, and you'll see that I'm not lying, and neither is Brian. Uh, you know, Harp is real, scalar technology is real, weather modification is real. Google Ben Livingston. This guy was the first man to seed a cloud. Here in the United States, uh, back in the 60s, and he was able to – by seeding the cloud, it literally tore the hurricane apart, and they were able to stop a hurricane before it made landfall. So back in the late 60s, they had this technology that they were able to do it just by seeding the clouds with certain particulate matter. Now, can you imagine the stuff they have today? You know, Go look up Nikola Tesla and his death ray. His death ray is what HARP is. I mean, you can do multiple things with scalar technology. You could use it as a weapon. You could control people's minds with it. It's really, really creepy technology. You know, and the government, oh, no, 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 we're not, there's nothing, there's no weapon purpose for it. Let me tell you something. If the Air Force is involved with something, there's a weapons purpose for it. 
the military never gets involved with anything unless it can weaponize it and use it uh, on the battlefield against a quote unquote enemy. Remember that. So, <clears throat> Brian, what other, uh, what other, what else have you found out about Harp? Like in your investigations, anything else besides just the the readings being cut off for like a week at a time? Well, I also found out that I found I think I know the reason why people suspected the Harp site was down because when you go to Harp. Alaska.edu, the, it won't connect to it. It says the server's not found. But when you add the www to it, it goes right straight to the site. So it's almost as if they're trying to throw people off so that they won't look into the magnetometer and do their own research. And so we, I, I know that when you add the www, we can get to it. So so everyone needs to know that if they can't get to the HARPS website, you need to have the www. And if you still can't get to the site, it could be something to do with the DNS being blocked or it could be some other reason. Or it could be that they're trying to keep people from getting to the site. Who knows? <laughs> well, it wouldn't surprise me. And they, you know, uh, people, a lot of people think that, oh, they wouldn't do that or what, they do. The government does tons of shady things to cover things up. Case in point, uh, guy on YouTube, uh, somebody had emailed it to him and he made a video about it uh, and uh, he showed that uh, the army put in an order for a massive order for uh, I think it was a little bit under 500,000 um, booklets to instruct people on how to operate a FEMA camp and how to for prisoners and stuff and they, they literally put in this order like they needed it yesterday so he did a video about it, and it came out like uh, I think about five or six days ago. And and as soon as he, you know, he put the link and everything up, and as soon as the video, I think the video got like twenty thousand hits and went viral. And as soon as it, it had like twenty thousand hits, and you could click on the link, he shows you the link. He clicks on it, and he shows you what the, you know, with a screen capture software, he shows you the page. And when you click on the same link, it's all edited now. It's it's all changed. So the government does that crap all the time. All right, guys, we're going to break. Uh, we're going to pay some bills. We'll be back in a few minutes. You're listening to Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com, and this is the Orion Talk Radio Network. Murdered and tortured, raped and pillaged I was only five and I was the only surviving witness My entire village burned to the ground He wore a serpent in his crown Happily committed murder with a frown And an army of black hooded fire He skull generals and a sorcerer with a guy Succeed, live in the struggle I know I'm alive when I bleed from now on It can never be the same as before Cause the place that I'm from doesn't exist anymore This is the point of no return Welcome back This, this is Popeye I'm your host The show's called called Down the Rabbit Hole. We're on from 5 to 7 every Sunday on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Please tune in because every week I promise to bring you more and more information that is you know very important and it's when I say very important it's not oh you know entertaining I don't talk about uh, Britney Spears's underwear or Paris Hilton or Lindsay Lohan I talk about important things like uh, mind control technology being used on the populace against our will and uh, uh, unknown to many people uh, or I should say not not only against our will but without our consent uh, you know the military, the police state, everything. It's important that you pay attention and listen to the radio show. And not only mine, but you also should tune in uh, from 3 to 5 to listen to Against the Wall with JJ Inc. Uh, I co-host with JJ. And uh, from 7 to 9 uh, on this radio network is um, John Preston. Tune in to John Preston show. You should tune into all the Orion Radio Network shows. Okay, listen to everything the Orion Talk Radio Network has to offer. You know, uh, there's no censorship. We give you real news, very very important information, and you know, th we don't. Th none of the DJs, none of the hosts, whatever you want to call us, none of us get paid. We all do this voluntarily. We all give up our own free time to do this. The owner of the station pays for everything out of his pocket. 
you know, he puts up his free time. Jimmy X does, has his own show. So, you know, tune into the, the different hosts on the channel. Uh, you don't have to agree with everything everybody says, but, you know, at least give everybody a chance. You know, if you don't like them, then don't tune back in. If you like them, tune back in. All right. That being said, I want to get back in. <clears throat> uh, before I get back to Brian really quick, uh, whoever we, – we were having – problems with our phone lines but i think i've worked the kinks out here with skype on my end so the six seven eight caller who called in if you want to call back and you want to call into the show feel free and uh i think i should be able to patch you without a problem all right um brian you were before we went to break you were talking about uh you know your investigations into harp and uh, during the break you were telling me that a lot of these tornado outbreaks and stuff are like completely unprecedented what's going on. So uh, tell me what, what you've discovered and you know what you yourself have found out. Well, it's, it's just that uh, whenever I was hearing on the news about the, all these tornado outbreaks that my own state in the state next to me, uh, you know, uh, Virginia, they were all declaring a state of emergency and, I had no idea that all these tornadoes were going around. And when I found out about that, it said it was, uh, un, I guess it was either, I think they said it was record breaking. So I thought that was a little odd because all of a sudden there's these record breaks of tornadoes and and now it's like everything's fine. There's not all these uh, record breaking tornadoes. So I've checked the data on HARP's website on their uh, it's a certain mag uh, magnetometer. I think it's called the introduction magnetometer. I went on there and I took a look at the dates that were not censored, and I noticed that there was there was magnetic activity. So why would there be all this magnetic activity right around when there's the tornadoes? So, and I even had a page on my website about this. It's not a post. It's actually a a page and everything because. Because I like I like to at least track all of the natural or unnatural disasters and compare them with the HARPS data, because it just seems a little weird. Uh, because uh, it, anybody who's a scientist and knows about magnetic, the magnetic uh, things of the, of the shoot. All right. I know what you Anyone mean, the magnetosphere and the, the ionosphere. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Anybody that knows that stuff could, could, will see the information and realize that there's something going on. You know, anybody with half a brain and understands basic science. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I know that heart bounces uh, sound frequencies uh, on the ionosphere. They bounce frequencies, and so wherever they bounce them to, it's hard to know what effects it could cause. And so, whatever they're doing, whatever it, it hits the ionosphere and then it, it it bounces off. That's how they can energize and cause earthquakes in certain parts of the world because they can literally hit something and mm. it, you know reflect it off the ionosphere and have it come back down and, and hit a certain part of the planet. So it's kind of like a Star Wars great weapon because with these frequencies they could cause uh, certain events to happen in places of the world. And and so, I mean, I've I've messed with sound frequencies. I know how the how they can affect the body. Like certain frequencies can help the body, and certain frequencies uh, hurt the body. And when you think about it, if you think of the Earth as like a human body, and you're you're bouncing frequencies into the Earth or on the Earth, uh, when you use sound frequencies, it can affect the Earth depending on what frequency you use and how how high is the amplitude. Now, so... Um, huh, that's I got creepy. That, that's, that just knowing that the technology exists is creepy. And then knowing that these evil scumbags in power uh, have the technology is even creepier. Hang on a sec. <clears throat> Hang on a sec, Brian. We got a caller. Um, caller, you're live. Yes, sir. This is uh, who you might know as Witness I. Oh, what's up, dude? Hey, how are you? How's it going? Oh, well, uh, I guess as good as it could be. <laughs> what's the uh, what's, what's the latest uh, What's the latest news you got? Because I uh, I always uh, I always I retweet a lot of the stuff that you, you, you I follow you on Twitter, and you always tweet some really good stuff. In fact, a lot of times I I, I end up finding good in, good articles from your your tweet references, and I end up using them on uh, Federal Jack. 
Well, awesome. That's great news. Um, I dig very hard. I have for years. Uh, I had no idea what trouble we were in, um, but I can tell you for many, many, many years, uh, we've had a lot of trouble with a bunch of damn liars, okay? Uh, that's a, one of the damn problems is people are so willing to just lie. It's, it's so easy. And, uh, and I'm just being honest. Uh, that's been a big trouble for me in my life. I've never understood it. And if you can't face up to it, you can't face the truth, you don't open your mouth. That's kind of the way I feel, you know? Very so really, true. Uh, the, the big thing for me, I don't know if you've looked this up or not, but I have. And uh, I'd like to double, I'd like to, again, double check the time that the earthquake actually occurred. Uh, the first one over there, um, you know, in Japan that affected Fukushima. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it 2.46? It was, some, it was like 2.46 or 2.47 in the afternoon. It was right around, it was right before like 3 o'clock when the earthquake hit. I'd have, to, I'd have to go back and check the records to see what the exact time was, but it was somewhere around there. That's what I thought. Now, um, I'm, I'm assuming that I have free reign to say whatever I want. This is First Amendment rights we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could totally talk about HARP and the Japan earthquake being talked about, you know, being caused by HARP. Go ahead. Did you ever go and look up the Illuminati card game again? Yeah, it's very creepy. The the, the Illuminati card game made uh, for the listeners that don't know what uh, the caller is talking about. He's talking about the Illuminati card game made by Steve Jackson Games uh, back in the 90s. Go look it up. It's really creepy. Yes, it is. And the, the weird thing, well, there's several weird things. That's the entire game. The premise is ridiculous, you know, and I can't even imagine enjoying playing a, a game like that. But uh, looking at the cards, you kind of get an insight into the, like, the mind's eye of these crazy globalist Bohemian Grovers. <laughs> you get to see kind of uh, how, they, how they think in a way. And uh, with that, you see the... You know, so you see the Twin Towers on one of the cars, and the next car has got the Pentagon being hit. Then it's got, you know, but whatever they call uh, it's the multiple disaster card. Um, I went online and looked at the, there was two names for this clock tower that were, that, that's on this uh, card. And I mean, it looks exactly the same. It looks like a drawn rendition of this uh, Waco, a KO. Clock tower. There's also another name. It starts with a G. I can't remember. Uh, Waco name is easy. Good. I can't remember the name of the clock tower that's in Tokyo. That's very famous. But if you look on the card and you look at the time that's on that clock, it freaked me out. Okay. I had a hunch. I just had this feeling that I needed. To Let me guess. It says 9/11. No, no. It was. 246, 247. Oh, that's and even it, creepier. Yeah, and it shows people, it's a rendition of an oriental kind of looking group of people running away from the tower at that time. And I didn't know if you had a chance to check that out or not. I didn't know if you got that on, on any of my phone. But uh, I think I haven't my own. It yet. I appreciate you calling in and telling me about it. We're uh, going to break. Guys, we'll be right back. You're listening to Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. We're going to pay the bills. We'll be right back. This is the Orion Talk Radio Network. Welcome back. This is Sunday, April 24th, 2011. You're listening to Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. And uh, I've got two guests on with me right now. Um, before we went to break, we were discussing the uh, the uh, Japanese earthquake and uh, the Illuminati card game uh, that Steve Jackson put out. Steve Jackson... Excuse me, Steve Jackson Games put out back in uh, the '90s, and uh, Witness Eye was telling everybody about uh, you know his theory and stuff, what was going on. So go ahead, Witness, getting right back into it. What were you what were you saying about you know Japan and everything else in the Illuminati card game? Well, what was really crazy about it was is, is 
um, starting to learn the nature of the beast that we're dealing with. And I get some clues here and there. And, uh, you know, I believe in the Father 100%, our Father, and that's where I come from. And that's what I will always believe in. And uh, he gives me some insight, that's all I can say. And so I had this hunch. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, when this happened, uh, I'd heard about the Illuminati, Illuminati card game, and I was like, let me just go check it out and see. Uh, lo and behold, there's a rendition. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's, it's a, an artist's rendition. What, and then it looks exactly like, the, like I say, there's two names, but Waco, W-A-K-O, Clock Tower. And then they use another name that I can't really remember right now. Um, it's more foreign, you know, uh, to my ears and eyes. But uh, the thing is, the clock tower is falling towards uh, the running away, again, uh, a rendition of an oriental-looking uh, people, of running away from it. It says 2.46, 2.47 on the clock tower. It's falling. And what really gave me a lot more of a clue in on what was going on here was watching Alex Jones do his Bohemian Grove. Uh, I tell you what, when I realized and, and actually listened to the words that that freak was saying, uh, he's pretending like he's some kind of preacher or something. The man ain't nothing. And uh, but when I heard those words come out of his mouth, uh, I realized that that was for real. I mean, they weren't kidding around. That's not just a play. This is not just a joke. Uh, they're they really believe in all that crap. They think they can go and cremate their cares out there in their little toy land and then bring it out here uh, into our world. Well, I mean, they're, they're sadly mistaken. Uh, but that kind of gave me a clear into more of, uh, and I guess that was a, a kind of a clue for me. And somehow I thought I needed to check the time on, uh, on the clock and then the time that, that the, the earthquake happened. And lo and behold, I mean, it, you know, how many different spots on a clock, on a 12-hour clock, are there? You know, what is it, you know, 60? Oh, it's 12? like the Simpsons clock, <clears throat> or um, was, was, was it a clock? Or no, it was a picture, I think, with like a comic book. And in the Simpsons, it was the same thing. It said 9-11. And then um, mm. if you look on in the movie The Matrix, Neo is signing a, uh, a piece of paper in the beginning of the movie. And when you look down at the date of the uh, on the date of the piece of paper he's signing, it's September 11th, 2001. So, you know, they, they do stuff like that. That's called synchronicity, and that's it's because they do that stuff on purpose. And these guys, these guys believe in this stuff. These guys believe whether or not we believe in it, whether or not. You know, everybody has their own personal religious beliefs and everything, and I support everybody's freedom of religion and freedom of beliefs because that's what makes that that's what would make a world great is for every you know for people to tolerate everybody. Okay, but I do want to know. I want to get into the Vatican to find out the truth. And the only way we'll ever find out the truth about anything with religion is when, if we rate the Vatican archives. I do too because this is the thing. I don't believe and I don't go for religion. I I have my own relationship. And it's up to me. It's not exactly. up to some of the men to try and tell me what I need to think and how Why I need to you act. have to talk through somebody else to the, the, whatever creative force there is, for lack of a better term, uh, God, or you know, exactly. whatever you want to call it. Why should you have to pay somebody? Because you know, they always want money from you, so why should you have to give them money and kiss their butt to be able to talk to God? Okay. He's any better. Okay. Like like the priests are any better than you, you know what I'm saying? That's like uh, not the case at all. They're not ordained by God. They're ordained by men. They go to these these uh, classes and then they get this piece of paper. And, and I'm sorry, but that's not how it works. Yeah, and, and when when 95 percent of them are caught like being pedophiles, I really don't. Yeah. I don't take anything you say to be you know useful and truthful. Absolutely, me either. Every bit of it to me at that point is a lie. I mean, maybe there's some stuff you're reading in the Bible that's real, but, you know, anything. Well, the Bible that. itself has been <laughs> edited, so, like, you can't really believe the, the King James Version because they, you know, at the Council of Nicaea, they, you know, Constantine pretty much decided that, you know, they were going to, there were certain things that weren't going to be in the Bible. And, and that, that was it. 
I understand that point of view for sure, because there are things that are contradictory and, and some things and mysteries that I've, I've run across that I've not understood, but I can, I can give you a real quick background and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let your other call who I uh, absolutely immensely respect. Um, but just a real quick background, I had a very unique, uh, well, I, I mean, I assume it to be unique because I don't hear people talking about these types of things, but <clears throat> a unique experience as a child. And it was real, and I will never deny it. And, uh, you know, he, he spoke to me and he told me to read the New Testament. And I'm, now I know why, because Jesus' words were the ones that a child could understand and were also very pure and loving. And uh, so when he told me that, I'm never going back on it. I know for a fact that's what he did. And it changed my life. He saved me. Uh, my grandfather had just committed suicide. And, uh, you know, at seven years old, I was contemplating it myself. And, uh, you know, he was my dad in my life. <laughs> so, you know, it was very personal. And it was the worst thing that ever happened in my life. And at the same time, when he came in and saved me, it was the best thing. And it was not some man telling me anything. You know, it, was me, it was me and him. <laughs> Well, it's good that you were able to find, you know, everybody has to, I don't discriminate against anybody for <clears throat> their their own beliefs, and it, I, I wouldn't consider you, like, religious, I would actually consider you more of a spiritual person, because religious oh. it, itself is like, you know, this and that, the, and that's it, you know, they're very dogmatic, whereas spiritual people, I find, are usually very open-minded to learn new things, they, you know, they accept the fact that there is a higher force, obviously, that created us, we just don't know what it is and they realize that they've pretty much been lied to about it so it's it's it's, well, it's good to, it's good that people are like that that's why i wouldn't classify you as a religious person i would classify you more as a, a spiritual person absolutely and i can say how much to i respect what uh really what buddhism is about and obtaining that uh, level of purity and you know it's not that i'm a buddhist but i i appreciate that and that is a large part of everything that i I'm here to do is to grow and slough off the crap. <laughs> And well, see, you know, it, religion wouldn't be a bad thing if you took all the good stuff from all the religions and put it together. You know, all these beliefs and put it together and live by that. That wouldn't be a bad thing. The problem is, a lot of religions are used as well. All organized religion is used as a mind prison. You know, to keep people. You know, if you don't. When I was a kid, I used to get in this argument with people, and I've gotten into this argument with my father about this. Where I'll say, look, I don't understand how God could give you free will and then make you burn in hell forever uh, eternally because you exercise your free will. That doesn't make sense to me. You know, that's that's like take the carrot, take the carrot, you take the carrot. Bad boy, you get smacked across the face. We're given choices as we go along. Now he's not exactly. just going to give us free will so that we will fall down in a hole. We're given choices and we make choices in every moment of every day, and yep. that's. I just don't believe in an eternally pissed off God. That's my, that's my personal point of view. All right, guys, we're going to break. We'll be right back. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye from FederalJack.com. I continue to blame the Knights Templar and the Hospitallers. The real reason New York lost their towers. Don't sit back or hesitate to react to the impact. Many taking a nap. In fact, they would fake it. Welcome back, guys. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. We are uh, touching on very taboo subjects today uh, with uh, Brian from USWGO and Witness Eye. With, uh, the three of us here are, are having a, uh, a rather in-depth conversation about religious views and stuff, and um, a lot of people are afraid to, to talk about it, and they, they won't bring it up. And uh, my show is about talking about things that other people are afraid to discuss. So I'm not afraid to discuss how I what I feel about religion. Uh, I'm not afraid to say I'm I'm proud. Look, I believe that you know people. By the way, if anybody hears that snoring in the background, that's my little truth or dog monster you guys anybody that's ever seen her on my videos knows her she's a, a little 10 pound uh shih tzu and uh, she has a uh, snoring problem because she's got a very short 
little snout. She happens to be riding shotgun with me today on my lap. So if you guys, if if at all during the broadcast, you guys have heard a, a snore in the background, that's her. Uh, and the reason I had to say that is because she's been very loud the past couple of minutes. So I figured you, somebody's probably heard her by now. <laughs> I didn't want anybody to think I was making weird noises in the background. So uh, I'm all about transparency, people. I'm all about transparency. <laughs> But uh, anyway, getting back into religion, we were talking during the break, and uh, you know, we were we were the three of us were talking how religion has pretty much been used as a mind prison around the world. And um, Saul uh, in the uh, in the uh, chat room said it best. He's talking about Saul. By the way, guys has his own radio show on the Orion Radio Network. Listen to it. Anyway, uh, Saul made a good point. The, the whole Gaia religion and that they've now they've made you know the whole Earth Day thing is the newest religion. And all these people that didn't have you know all these people that denounced you know religion because they're pissed off, you know they attack Christianity as a whole, and they use the Catholic Church to make Christianity look bad. And they make it easy. Yeah, of course. And they, they, yeah, dude, they make it easy. I mean, they they don't even have to try. <laughs> so, so they because the Catholic Church is is perverted and evil anyway. I mean, if if anybody understood that the the Pope walks around with a satanic uh, symbol in his hand, that that, yeah. that cross he walks around, it, it's got two crosses on it. It's called a double cross. That's a bent wooden double cross. It's a satanic symbol. Okay, you know why does the Pope wear the fish head? That fish head hat that he wears, that's symbolic of Nimrod, the ruler of Babylon. Why the hell is the Catholic Pope wearing a fish head depicting Nimrod? Hmm, I wonder. People should go look it up. Okay? All religions stem from Babylon. They knew about our creator, right? That's what the way I look at it, right, guys? Like, they yeah, knew the yeah. truth, and these same elites that were in control in Babylon, or the bloodlines are in control today. Here you go. Let's tell you to me, if you read the Bible and you read people, you know, you read the real word, you're going to find that you're not supposed to be trying to dress up all pretty and everything. It's, you're not looking for the best seat at the table. You know, it's not about that. Not at all about that. It's about <laughs> what you, your relationship with him. That's all it is. It's nothing to do with trying to look fancy and have the best seat at the table. That's Satan. That's the way he is. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not, not the way we should be. No, dude. And you know what? Um, Anon 9340 just posted in the chat room. And guys, again, the uh, chat room link, I know that the show is going to be over in about 25 minutes, but uh, for future okay. reference, it's D T R H F J dot chat and go dot com. Or you can just go to Federal Jack and uh, there's a. Right on the top, it's just chat room. You just click on the link, and it opens up a page with the chat room on it. But um, Anon brought up a good point. He's quoting uh, George Carlin, I believe, if I'm correct. And um, he says, basically, uh, this is the kind of uh, stuff you'd expect from an office temp with a bad attitude, You know, talking about God, if, if God is really as they say he is. This is the kind of stuff you you know you'd expect from an office temp with a bad attitude. And just between you and me, in any decently run universe, this guy would have been out on his all powerful ass a long time ago. So, I mean, it's the that he's right. There's no there's no way that when you just it's so absurd. It's like looking at their official religion story is like looking at the official government story of anything that's ever happened it's always absurd and out of the uh, out of this world and only doing research on your own and doing you know through alternative sources do you find any shred of any truth and i don't i don't pretend to know anything compared to what's hidden in those archives like we were talking about during the break we we need to get into the vatican archives like brian how what, what kind of stuff do you think is hidden in the, in the vatican archives well i definitely think that there is a lot of stuff hidden in the archives of course people have argued with me that that oh it's open to anyone anyone can go there but I know there's a certain amount of archives they let scholars or people look at, but I have a feeling that it's not all the stuff they're showing. I mean, the stuff that they let people go to is heavily vetted and controlled, and I have a feeling that 
that there's probably knowledge that's being kept under lock and key where they won't let you get to because there's always a lot of uh, good knowledge out there. And also, I think that, like, whenever people were saying that the scrolls from the Library of Alexandria burn, I have a, I have a feeling that the scrolls did not just be destroyed. That maybe somebody came in there, got the scrolls, and hid it somewhere. I think that knowledge is there's there's certain amount of knowledge that some certain kinds of people want to keep hidden, and they're not given to the general public. Without a doubt, witness. What do you think? What do you think's in there? I mean, you know, do you have any do you have any thoughts on particular things that you think yeah, are in there? I'll, I'll definitely tell you that there are some things that are missing because I know. I know, see, I, I know, I know Jesus, I know God, and there's some things that don't quite jive, and, you know, I don't, I don't profess to say that, you know, uh, that there's any miswritings. I, I can't say that, because it could be that I'm misinterpreting certain parts, okay? Because that's what I use, and I don't go with supplements, ever. Just the word I read, but I do ask for the Holy Spirit to interpret those things for me. Uh, and, and I've done that for years and years since I was seven. I'm 39 now, okay? And that, I'm, now I love him uh, very deeply. My thing is, because I know him, he is the father. He, he loves us like better than the best father in the world, in the flesh could ever be. He is all of those things. And for anything to instill a fear into anyone that... <clears throat> that is true to digging for him, uh, there's no reason to fear except for, I do fear him. I, I, when he comes, uh, it's going to be scary. I mean, I'm just saying it will be. It'll be scary to every living piece of flesh on this earth. But I don't, I don't fear anything but him. And I don't fear him except for knowing how scary it's going to be when he first gets here uh, to take back what's his. And that's what's going on here. If you look at the GMOs and you look at all this geoengineering, you look at heart. See, this is Satan tempting God and telling him, trying to show everybody that he is God. That's what this is. We're going through right now. It's well, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what what you like. What? Because a lot of people, you know, they say he's, Satan's a demon or a fallen angel or whatever. Or some people believe in. Like I've researched and I've talked about the the interdimensional beings, which even science is admitting that there's a fourth dimension. So who the hell knows what the evil is? All I know is it, 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 it does exist. I know without a doubt that evil exists. And when New Age morons try to tell me that evil doesn't exist, I tell them, I'm like, dude, I've seen it with my own eyes. So to tell me that there is no evil, there just is, that's retarded. Okay, because I've seen it with my own eyes. Whether or not I believe it's Satan or any, anything else or whatever any other religious belief believes, whatever they call their, their evil energy. Uh, you know what? We're all, I, I respect everybody's religious viewpoint because at, at a, as, long as, as long as you don't get so caught up to where you're willing to kill each other for stupid things, then I have to argue with you about – you know what I mean? Like, the, the, and there's fanatics in every religion. Like you got this, this moron, this pastor, Terry Jones, that keeps burning the Quran. And he does he it. Do that, he's, man. Somebody pay him his ass to do that. Oh, of course. He's totally – no, he's t – to me, he's a – that's a CIA op. That's what yeah. that is. That's a complete CIA op run so that they can say, look, we need to clamp down on free speech because this guy is burning Qurans and causing people to you know, get killed over in, in, in you know, UN workers over in Pakistan and stuff, and we can't have that. So your free speech is pissing somebody off of, in another country. So you, you know, in a, in a one-world global government, you don't have free speech anymore because you might offend someone. So you have to shut your mouth. I mean, and Lindsey Graham uh, – jumped all over it he was all over the, the the networks telling everybody that we should you know look you know free speech is a great thing but we're you know we're at war and you know right now yeah, he's a globalist dude all right guys we're going to break we'll be right back we're back in like three minutes you're listening to down the rabbit hole with your host popeyes hey brother Welcome back. 
I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. This is our final segment for this Sunday, Easter Sunday, April 24th, 2011. Um, guys, don't forget, next week, tune in, especially between – I mean, tune in and listen to the whole show, but make sure you listen between um, – six and seven because i'm going to be interviewing gary franchi from rtr uh and the lone lantern society uh, again he produced camp fema camp fema 2 don't tread on me um he's an incredible filmmaker uh good friend of mine and just an all-around awesome human being and you guys are going to get the pleasure of talking you know or at least yeah listening to me talk to him uh, for an hour next week. I won't be taking phone calls while he's on unless I have uh, some time in the end to kill. Then I might, but not. You know, there's a 99% chance I won't be taking phone calls while he's on, so I can let him get out as much information and stuff, and you know, uh, let him introduce himself to, to the listeners that don't know him as much as he can. So, all right. With that being said, uh, we've had a pretty interesting show so far, and um, I've been talking with uh, Brian and Witness Eye about. Uh, you know, pretty much we got into uh, religion and everything, which is very, very taboo subject. But um, before we went to break, you know, I was, I was pretty much just saying, look, you know, that no matter what religious people's religious views are, um, you, you you have to drop the 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 fear aspect of it. You have to drop the the being afraid of your God, because no, as far as I'm concerned, no God. Uh, and, and I've always said this since the time I was a little kid. I don't consider that. I don't believe and buy into the whole pissed off God theory. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It just doesn't make sense that he would give you, you know, free will and free thought and everything else, and then punish you eternally in damnation for it. It just that's retarded. That's that. That means that God is like a, a seven-year-old kid burning ants with a, a you know, a, a, a micro, a, a magnifying glass. Come on. That he is not. <laughs> exactly. So like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that he would create this huge universe, you know, all these planets, and you know, that's that's why it irritates me when people go, "Well, if you believe in aliens, you can't believe in God." That's not true. So, that's I, not true. I believe in a higher energy. I think that he made them too. I don't believe right. that they're gods. I just wonder what the hell they are, you know. And and for anybody to think that we're humans are the only intelligent life in this universe, that's highly arrogant, very arrogant. Because if first of all, I've said this once, I'll say it again, dude. If we're the top of the line, we're screwed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, really, that's the best this all-seeing, all-power could do is this. You know what I'm saying? I've seen videos. Where they were taking, NASA was taking video and they were circling the Earth, you know, orbiting the Earth. And we're seeing these little things that look like shrimp. And they're moving around like little shrimps, okay? Well, I mean, who knows what's out there? Um, but I'm focused, you know, on what's in me. And I also know that, you know, with Project Blue Beam, they, they got, I know what they're planning on doing. They're trying to convince people that aliens have come or that the saviors, uh, you know, different, you know, of different religions have come, see? They're trying to trick and Satan can only trick you before God comes back. That's it. It's over after that. They can't trick you no more. But it's going to be the first one that we see. Look, I mean, we won't even have to have anybody tell us, hey, come and look, he's over here. Because, by gosh, you can not be rest and assured that that is not him. Well, I'm going to tell you what. If if Jesus or God, like if if, if according to like the Christian religion, we'll use that as an example. If if Jesus Christ did come back, uh, I'm going to tell you what. You'd know it. Okay. You'd know it. You, You'll you'll know if if he's really going to come back if if the if the Christians have it right and they you know I honestly don't think that there's going to be an end of the world I think after 2012 there's going to be a spiritual and mental awakening to what's really going on and I believe that people are going to start to see these pricks that are in power for what they really are and you know I I believe it's going to be much harder for them to hide behind things and that's why they're pushing for this ever omnipresent police state that they're trying to build and push on everybody because they're scared they're scared of what's going to happen when everybody realizes what's really going on and you know it doesn't I, I it doesn't matter what you believe in religion wise when you're when your religions are being used to control you, when your when your beliefs are being used to control you and tell you what to do, that's a prison. 
So I'm not trying to make fun of anybody for believing in anything, anybody that's listening. But seriously, check your religious beliefs. You know, your God should not be punishing you. You know, um, if you're Muslim, Allah shouldn't punish you for you know speaking your mind. If you're Buddhist, Buddha shouldn't punish you. If you're Christian, Jesus and God or whatever you want to call your God shouldn't punish you. You know, I don't buy into the whole Catholic version of things that you're going to burn in hell. You know that 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 that, that's crazy to me. You know you can let the you can't swear you you can't say you can't can't swear you you know you can't do anything and you'll burn in hell. But the 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 pastor can molest you and that's okay. So oh yeah no no (laughs) he's in deeper shit than most anybody else on the planet. Exactly. That's why you know, these people are so evil. It's disgusting. You know, the people that pretend to be your saviors. That's why, again, I don't like organized religion because the people at the very top have perverted whatever whatever good that it might have been intended. It, that if you even want to think about it that way and say, oh, well, it it could have done good and it does do good. Whatever good it does, it does tenfold in damage because those the same people that you know that they believe oh i must follow my you know my pastor or my whatever my reverend these so a lot of these guys there's there's there are guys out there that are trying to wake people up and say look that this this new world order this stuff is real and these people are trying to you know, if they come for you and they tell you that we want your guns it's okay you say no you know but there there's a lot of people that you know look hey Romans 13 you know god created gov you know the government was created by god so we must listen to the government that's insane that's yes, insane. insane. When you look at our government, what is the being with land? That's the Constitution of Bill of Rights. That's us. That's not some other group of men. That's us here. And I'd hate to be in another area of the world and have to deal with that you know, idea. But I have to say, it can't be true because he wants us to be, he wants to live, us to live in truth and love each other. He does not want us to go around killing each other. And all, they're, all the New World Order is doing right now is trying to keep us all divided like they have for freaking years. All they want to do, anybody that's brown, if you're white, don't like them. You know, uh, it's the Muslims and all that crap. That's exactly. Cool. It's to keep that's us cool. divided. It's to keep us so that – and let me tell you what. I have – some of my closest friends are of – complete different ethnic backgrounds than I am. My wife was born on an island. You know, she grew up on an island. It, it, oh. it, you know, it, to me, it there I don't agree with the whole the whole thing of race and everything that goes back to these these psychos being obsessed with their blood lineage <laughs> and having the ability and all you know all these these family members and you know always keeping somebody uh you know the the bloodline never too far off and everything that's their obsession that's not my obsession if you're a decent human being i don't care what country you're from i don't care what your religious beliefs are as long as you're not oppressive as long as you don't try to push your religious beliefs on other people as long as you're not a dick i don't care I, I I'm fully I'm 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 fully on board. As long as you're a decent human being, that's fine. But there are people that are evil. There are people that are bad people, and unfortunately, that's a reality we have to deal with. And they allow themselves to be through their choices. They're constantly well, exactly. Allowed. When you if your mind is controlled, you know science and and and. And religion has finally come together and admitted that we, you know, we pretty much create our own reality. That's what that's what quantum physics is, you know, admitted. So if we create our own reality and you have somebody controlling your free will, then your reality really isn't your con- your reality, is it? Your reality is manufactured by somebody else. You're giving your free will up to somebody else. So maybe the crappy situation that you've been in for 20 years really isn't. That's not how your life is supposed to be. And maybe if you just changed a little bit, maybe if you just you know, got off the TV mind control crap. Stop listening to, you know, BS pop music and and, and yeah. crap like that. And pay attention and realize that the rabbit hole is deep, dark, and scary. You know, again, a book I'm going to tell everybody to go read is the the Transformation of America by Kathy O'Brien and Mark Phillips. It's this woman's testimony, and that'll lead you to other people's testimonials. Another one is Thanks for the Memories. The those two books the alone you're going to learn a lot about a lot of famous people especially the country music industry and you're going to learn how very deeply involved a lot of country music stars are in ferreting uh, drugs and uh, mind controlled slaves 
uh, i.e., presidential models. You know, a lot of these girls that you, these young pop stars that you see on TV, they always act weird and strange. A lot of them are presidential models. In fact, I'm willing to bet that at one point or another, Lady Gaga herself has been pimped out to people, to high heads of state from not only in the United States government to other uh, other governments as well, all over the world. And I say that because I know that she's a she's a project a project a, a project. She's a product of Project Monarch. So again, you know, go check out MK Ultra. Go check out Project Monarch. Go check out um, uh, what was there was one more. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of it now. It uh, it it dealt with mind controlled uh, Mercs. I just look, when you, during your your MK Ultra research, there's so much the information I have flowing around in my head. It's ridiculous, but. Again, The Transformation of America by Kathy O'Brien, and check out Project Monarch. It'll stick in you. Okay, guys, end of the show. Happy Easter. Till next week, I'm Popeye. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. Stay tuned. John Preston's going to be on next, question 46 from 7 to 9. I was only five and I was the only survivor witness. My entire village burned to the ground. He wore a serpent in his crown. Happily committed murder with a frown and an army the black hooded. It was uh, called United We Fall. It was about the uh, North American Union, which you can find on their website. Or um, you can watch both of them for free on YouTube, on their YouTube page, which is Weaving Spider, which is all one word. But I suggest that you guys go help out the filmmakers and just purchase the DVD. It's not expensive. You know, it helps them make future movies. But uh, their uh, their newest one, Into the Fire, which is about the G20, is just incredible. And it it uh, if you don't know what a police state looks like, you will see what a police state looks like. You will see see how fast police and military are willing to violate your civil liberties and take away your freedoms that by law they're not allowed to do you know when people say oh but they're they're the authority it doesn't matter the constitution is what is the law of the land so it doesn't matter if you know bob the the street sweeper or the president of the united states violates it it's still a violation of the constitution there's no difference just because of the person's you know level or their job or whatever you know the street sweeper shouldn't be <clears throat> sent to jail for life for violating someone's constitutional rights and whereas the president gets away with it every day you, that's wrong you know and cops you know, government agents. At all none of these people have the authority to violate your constitutional rights. They think they do, so they'll grab you and physically assault you. And then later on, they'll, they'll oh well, you know, you're going to do the ride, but you, you you might not do the you might not do the, the way the cops say it is you might not do the time, but you're definitely going to do the take the ride. So they're going to arrest you. You might not go to jail and spend time, and you know, you might not be in jail forever, but you're going to do the ride. So. It's just ridiculous, dude. It, it's completely ridiculous. You know, peace police officers used to be called peace officers back in the day. And I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to want to be a cop. And then when I got older, I realized I couldn't be a cop because by the time I was old enough to be a cop, by that time, a lot of the decent cops were getting retired or, or leaving and they were replacing them with the scumbags that they have now. So it, it's it's – it's just very telling that what's happening to our society that over the course of, you know, in, I'll, I'll say in the past like 35, 40 years, the police departments have really begun to be, mili you know, turned into military. And within the past 10 years, it's gotten worse. And that's why I covered the North Hollywood shootout a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's why I covered the North Hollywood shootout because uh, – there's just so much information. There's so much information to be gleaned from that little, that that little that little incident alone. I mean, right after that, Clinton pushed for the assault weapons ban. You know, so just because two bad seeds, everybody no no one has the right to have you know guns and anything else. It's ridiculous. So for for people to to say something stupid like that and for for people to for the citizens to accept those kind of draconian laws as oh well for my pieces for that inch. Yeah. Claw with our fingernails for that inch. Because we know 
when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that inch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now, I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now, I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. It is April 24th, 2011, Easter Sunday. Uh, Happy Easter to anybody that's listening that is uh, of the Christian denomination. crumble inch by inch play by play till we're finished we're in hell right now gentlemen believe me and we can stay here get the shit kicked out of us or we can fight our way back into the light we can climb out of hell one inch at a time you know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. Hell yeah. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. <laughs> On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to... If not... Uh, happy whatever you consider today's day to be. Happy whatever pagan holiday it was. Um, anyway, uh, today's show, I'm going to dive right into a few things. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is just something that's been on my mind since I saw it uh, early, early this morning. I was up till about 7 o'clock this morning, actually. And then I, I napped before I, I did uh, JJ's show and my show. But uh, I was watching a, a friend of mine who's a fellow filmmaker and uh he's a, an investigative reporter and all around awesome individual his name's dan dix and uh he created press for truth which is <clears throat> uh out of canada and these guys are awesome they go around uh and they've their the camera is their is their weapon they they capture what's really going on and during the G20, uh, his crew and him really stepped up to the plate and put their uh, collective butts on the line to show people the truth of what was going on at the G20 in Canada in Toronto uh, about a year ago. And uh, it was just incredible. I, I, he got footage from other people, other patriots and you know, uh, freedom lovers that went and videoed what was going on and got arrested and the crap kicked out of him for nothing and uh he uh he put him and brian law another guy uh, from press for truth put together a movie they've this is their second movie the first one they did